Hi there. My name's Geneve and I'm an economist working here at the Reserve Bank of Australia. This is another edition of our current economic conditions summary where we'll go through recent developments in the Australian and global economy. We'll cover inflation, economic growth, the labour market and the RBA's cash rate decision in November. First up, inflation. Over 2024, Australia's inflation rate has continued to slow. This means that while prices are still rising, they are increasing at a slower rate than before. This is what we call disinflation. But inflation hasn't come down far or fast enough. When we talk about inflation, we think about two different measures. Headline inflation, the one that captures all prices in the consumer price index, has fallen sharply in recent months, reaching 2.8% over the year to September. While this means that headline inflation is now within our target range of 2 to 3%, it is really important to note that this is expected to be temporary. A key reason why headline inflation declined was because of state and federal government's energy rebates, which reduced electricity costs. And fuel prices have also declined. These factors push the overall inflation rate lower in the September quarter. But those energy rebates are scheduled to end, which will see headline inflation increase again next year. And we know fuel prices are quite volatile too. Now the RBA board sets monetary policy such that inflation is expected to remain sustainably within the target range. So it's important that we look through temporary factors such as these energy rebates. That's why the RBA also pays attention to underlying inflation, which is the measure that excludes large temporary price changes. Underlying inflation tells us more about the overall trends in price changes, and this can help in making better decisions around monetary policy. We've been talking about underlying inflation. How do we measure it? One method is to look at something called trimmed mean inflation, which is what you can see in blue on this graph. The trimmed part means that the items with the largest price changes, both the biggest increases and the biggest decreases, are taken out. Trimmed mean inflation was 3.5% over the year to the September quarter, which is lower than it has been, but still quite a bit higher than headline inflation. The pace of decline in trimmed mean inflation has been gradual, and that's largely because inflation in the prices of some services has been slower to decline than inflation in the prices of goods. So, when will underlying inflation return to the RBA's target band? We expect underlying inflation to return to the top of the target range in mid to late 2025 before reaching 2.5%, the midpoint of the target range, by late 2026. This is inflation in Australia. But we are seeing a similar story in overseas economies. Just like Australia, underlying inflation in advanced economies has eased and is much lower than their peak levels. But relative to these other economies, you can see that Australia, in the dark blue, is still sitting at the upper end of the range. Now, let's talk about economic growth. We measure this by looking at changes in gross domestic product, GDP, which represents aggregate demand in the economy. The Australian economy grew by 1% over the year to the June quarter. Even though GDP growth is subdued, this is helping to bring the level of total demand for goods and services closer to the level of supply. That helps inflation to come down. Another important area is the labour market. We say that the labour market is gradually easing, but remains tight. This means that businesses' total demand for workers is still high compared to the total supply of workers in the economy. Growth in the number of people and jobs has been really strong. Businesses are continuing to advertise job vacancies and the share of people participating in the labour force is at record highs. That said, we do expect the unemployment rate to gradually increase over the next year, which will help bring labour demand and supply back into balance and in turn reduce inflationary pressures. At its November meeting, the RBA board decided to leave the cash rate unchanged at 4.35%. This balances its two objectives of monetary policy. One, keeping inflation in check and two, achieving full employment. Returning inflation sustainably to target within a reasonable time frame remains the board's highest priority. And the board noted that it is staying vigilant to the risk of higher inflation while also keeping a close eye on the labour market. Now that wraps up our dive into current economic conditions. 
If you're curious for more, we've got plenty of resources for students on our website. Visit our education page, links in the description. Thanks for watching.